You're watching Tag TV. I'm your host, Tahir Gora, in my show, Candid Talk. Views as we know that uh, we are getting ready for Canada's federal election 2015. The date is set for October 19, 2015. And this is probably the longest campaign in Canada's election history. Today, I'm joined with two community leaders and uh, they have their inclination towards certain political parties but also with their help we would be analyzing general situation of this election and uh, maybe uh, my fellows who I have joined me today would project some of their uh, predictions so in my studio I welcome Mr. Sardor Tehara and uh, as well as uh, Mr. Sharif Sabave. And uh, you both gentlemen uh, are community leaders and uh, Mr. Tiara, you uh, actually have inclination towards the Conservative Party and Mr. Sharif Sabave, as, you, as everyone knows in Greater Toronto area, <laughs> you are so active in Liberal Party. Uh, you ran a nomination um, uh, contest uh, and uh, you are very much popular within all communities. So welcome to the studio. So how would you see the election going towards? Um, in my opinion, the, as I was uh, earlier before the show we are talking, uh, I think the votes are divided like almost equally, like one third each party. And there will be other factors which might affect the overall success of the party who's going to win the election. One of those uh, points would be the experience. I think experience is going to play a big role in the next election because of like how I will run my campaign, how my campaign will keep the momentum till the deadline, the end line, because it's long. So some campaigns might uh, performance wise degrade because of the lengthy period. Uh, people will lose momentum, will lose interest, it's going to be boring, it's too much work, it needs energy. So who is going to be able to keep that momentum going? I think he will have uh, the success. And that's in my opinion. And now platform discussions could be pluses and minuses here and there. But at the end of the day, a lot of technicalities which might affect the next election in my opinion. Because of the closeness of the numbers. All right, uh, so how would you see, Mr. Yeah. Um, my, I'm pretty well agree with gentlemen, but only thing I see, if you look for experience, experience already there. Mr. Harper is an experienced person. Proven leadership as Proven leadership election campaign. Election says. campaign, and also we see that last 10 years since he's the Prime Minister, our economy is so strong, he is the man for his words. Whatever he say, he do it. And he always want to work for Canada and bring the country up to the level where the whole the world is going to watch how our economy is going. That's the, one of the best things Harper did for Canada. I think experience there, his commitment there, other two people, parties are, they are new. They don't know what they're talking about. I have some facts and figures with me to talk about them. So I think we should uh, look at this way. Harper will, more, will have a majority government because it's too long a campaign yet. And now you're already seeing, if, if you two gentlemen read the Toronto Star today, you see what they're talking about Tom McClare. They're all showing his numbers are phony. So I think, sure it's a long uh, campaign, but this is not the first thing happened in Canada's history. That's actually the second time happened in Canada's history. This long is a campaign running. So my feeling is, sure we have to work hard. It's experience and also is long campaign. and. If anybody make a mistake, doesn't matter who is, he's going to be suffer. But experience always come up front, and I have a feeling, 100% feeling, Harper will come up to form a government. Okay, so you think that uh, your projection is that Mr. Harper would yes. be able to make a majority government one more time? Yes. So, uh, uh, Sharif, as uh, uh, Tiara Sahib is saying, that uh, uh, there's a proven leadership, and uh, both other leaders are relatively new parties are not new for sure mm -hmm. and uh, justin has been 
in office as a member of parliament for, mm -hmm. for, for a few terms. Yes. But uh, uh, he is young relatively. Yes. But Mr. Mulkir is a very uh, experienced guy. So how, yes. how do you think? Yes, uh, the I, I agree. I agree in the uh, analysis from uh, uh, our, uh, our guest in regards to experience. Yes, my, Mr. Harbour might have the biggest experience in the three of them, the proof and record. Yes, maybe. But uh, you omit the other part, the energy, the momentum. I think, in my opinion, the Liberal Party had the biggest momentum. They have the biggest grassroots in youth. When I talk to youth, I am a professor in George Brown, so I meet with youth every day and I talk to youth. I think Liberal Party communicated and connected very well with the youth, the grassroots. And that's, in my opinion, the second, as I mentioned, the second pillar for that election would be the energy and the momentum. I think the Liberals have the biggest momentum. Justin Trudeau bring to the party um, uh, the fresh blood, the young, the energy. Uh, I'm not saying new look because the Liberal Party didn't change. The other thing is also experience, yes, from the leader point of view, yes, but in the other side of the thing is the leader does not lead by himself. There's, there's the advisors, the committees, everybody work together. So yes, maybe Justin, was not uh, the uh, prime minister yet, but the advisor around him already worked with Stephen uh, Stephen Dion, was Jean Chrétien, was uh, uh, many of the uh, uh, Paul Martin. There's many of the Canadian greatest leaders who those guys served with and built that type of experience. So there will be other exper expertise to back up Justin, not Justin by himself. So that's, that's my answer for the experience wise, but I still think that Liberal have the best and highest energy levels. All right, as Mr. Sharif says that uh, uh, Justin uh, has uh, uh, energy and also Liberal Party, uh, but on the other hand, uh, conservative uh, election campaign slogan, one of the slogans says that Justin is not ready yet. So... Uh, <laughs> this, is, this is very true, Justin is not ready yet. You tell me we live in this country. I'm here in 1972. And once government gives something to something to the people to make their life better, if some leadership comes up and they want to ruin their life, people are not going to vote for them. This is the good thing about uh, income splitting. Like a lot of these people home, husband works or wife works, and they have a young family. If the wife makes less money or vice versa, their income can be split, the more money goes to people's pocket. And Trudeau saying we cannot cancel that. Child benefit. This this country need a population. If you're not gonna help people, young kids don't care about the new grown babies. If we support them, they will have babies and country will grow. And that's why everybody wanna come to a different country to bring here for immigration because this population in this country is not growing. So if we're cutting all these things off, we're going fifty, hundred years back again with the liberal leadership. And Tom McClare, his budget. He's not even leader yet. His budget already telling us so many billion dollars we short this, this first year. So this is a proven leadership. This is a commitment delivered leader. So I'm pretty sure Harper will the one of the best from these three. And, and he, will, he will bring the Canada to a certain place. And then we whole world can watch what Canada do. The other two leaders, they don't have that vision. Leader will be thinking about 5, 10, 15, 20 years ahead. Not today to today leader. Today, today, talking about our job, the leader always with long vision, and they're thinking what happened in 2030, 2040, 2050. This is the vision we need for the country, not for day-to-day -day things. Now they're talking about the TFS account. They will make a limit to how much you can draw. Your money you cannot draw. The reason putting the money in TFS account, you can put all you want, limit up to limit, and draw when you want. If you're putting certain laws to the people, people are going to get upset, and that's why I'm thinking Harper will come up, it's too long campaign yet. You watch. After the long weekend, things are going to be different. Thank you. So, Mr. Thera is so confident that Mr. Harper is going to make a majority government. Do you have sort of projection for Liberal Party at yes, this moment? Yes, absolutely. Like, first of all, I would like to ask uh, him, what, what was the age for when Mr. Stephen Harper won the election the first time? He lost 10 years. He, okay. he may be maybe around 50. I don't, I don't know for sure, but he was around 50. No, I, I think he was in the same age as Mr. St uh, Trudeau now. Maybe so it's, it's not, right. it's like the, using the slogan, he's not ready. I don't think it's very fair. 
it's a good it's a good marketing thing yes mm -hmm. maybe but it's not true thing so uh, we don't know uh, like uh, in uh, when mr. St uh, Stephen Harbour when the election was he ready at the time I mean or as ready as now but that doesn't mean that we will we can't uh, change because also with new faces and new bloods comes new ideas thinking out of the box if i'm doing the same job for 10 years most probably i already built in my mind kind of the frame i'm working on for the next uh, another maybe two three years because that's where the box i built for myself i think justin trudeau is bringing the new a new blood and new think out of the box thing revolution solutions uh, he might be more dare to do take decisions because of the age difference and 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 the freshness now in regards to the tsfa uh, account actually this is uh, in my opinion this is the biggest uh, uh, fudge thing like it's right, not right. really it's not really something we uh, need to talk about that much because with that 10 grand like taking it from five grand to 10 grand or something the limit uh, opening the limit a little bit if you look in the uh, interest rate today it's all the interest rates is below one percent it's like 0 0.5 0 0.6 point whatever so if you are telling me that you are giving me a tax break on 0.5 percent of 10,000 which is like maybe 0.5% uh, of 10,000 is what, like 500 bucks? So I'm giving you a tax break of 500 bucks. Is that like this big off an issue? Uh, how many of the Canadians have 10,000 extra money end of the year to put in TSFA account? I, I don't believe maybe 10%, n not even 10%, maybe 5% of the Canadians have that much of money extra money will to you, put in TSFA you, after putting that like uh, let me finish okay. uh, we have our RSB which is 18 percent so you're assuming that I have 18 percent to put for my RSB for my retirement and then 10 grand on top of that to be able to make use of this money or this feature I don't assume I, I, I assume that less than maybe two three percent of Canadians can do that or can make use of this feature at least the rich people which we are not talking about we are talking about the majority of Canadians that's that's my point about the TSFA I agree that uh, with experience there might come more understanding of the landscape yes the procrats the system the architecture the hierarchy yes I understand that but it doesn't mean that the new the new ways of thinking might not even become better we can't assume that the new ideas are not going to be better than old ideas until we see the new ideas so my my uh, my ask from people is um, look into the platform look into what the liberal is saying look compare and make your educated choice based on your understanding of the issues not by he's old he's young he's like this is not the issue the issue is understanding the platform understanding the issues we are having in hand and i understand of course that every voter his priority is different than other voter my priority could be the uh, sorry. My priority could be uh, financial. Other bodies' priority is could be the education. Other person priority priority might be the foreign affairs. Everyone have different priorities. Look in the general pictures. Let's not get caught into like very very detailed stuff because we don't know what we don't know. Thank you. Okay. Can I so, can I go yes, back please, to please, gentlemen's question? When you're talking about rate of interest we're getting on TFSA. Mm -hmm. Don't forget, if you're not getting match, and also people have a mortgage for hundred thousand dollars, two hundred thousand, three they're not paying much either. But some families, five hundred dollars mean a lot. I know you people are rich. You don't care about five hundred dollars? No, 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 family, that's that's no, five hundred that's, that's, that break on five hundred, not five hundred dollars. Let me finish. Even <laughs> two hundred dollars. A lot of these families live in day to day basis, <coughs> that's a lot of money. Tam McClare, Justin Trudeau, they're they're big. And you know these people, liberal people, ruin Canada, ruin their own party. If you go back more than 10 years, mm -hmm. you see what Paul Martin did for the liberal party. Mm -hmm. Kill the party. Now he's helping Justin Trudeau again, saying he's a good candidate. If you cannot prove anything, how are you going to pass on to somebody? Okay. Thank you.
Okay, so back to, right. to your point. You, we are not talking about $500. We are talking about tax break on $500. Yeah, there's, no, there's no tax on it. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's what I'm there's saying. No tax tax on this $500 if you have the $10,000. Like, yes. this is this is a condition. Like, so we are giving tax break for people who have extra money versus the people who have not enough money. That's, that's a point yeah. I'm talking about. Second thing about Mr. Paul Martin. Maybe there's issues about uh, the party uh, achievement from Mr. Paul Martin, but we as Canadians have to agree and have the gratitude for Mr. Paul Martin because he protected our banking systems when he was the Minister of Finance. I still, you can still go back to the, the uh, parliamentary, parliamentary sessions about discussions about opening our banking system and having the raising the uh, uh, borrowing money w uh, without uh, uh, um, secured uh, assets and stuff. Mm -hmm. And you will see during the discussions that the Conservative Party who are who were were uh, against that, and they are said like by doing that you are limiting our economy we won't like to open the, our economy like the u.s american american economy and system and stuff and paul martin he's the one kept our banking system and that's why one of the reasons we didn't get collapsed economy like the u.s with the mortgage uh, crisis it's was it's it's our it's banking it's system is very conservative paul martin you were just a finance minister everything done by the prime minister john christie he was the leader of the country. He either gave the tools thing to do Paul Martin to do thing. He either want to approve everything. You yes. don't say Paul Martin did it. John Christian did it. But at the end, Paul Martin was a patriot to the party. He killed the party. And now he's passing on to... to, to so to you mean that thing. Paul Martin, uh, is uh, his legacy was not a very successful That's legacy? Right. Uh, you, we all know that. The result, you see it. He become a prime minister and he called the election and he's gone. So if, if he keeps the party united, he do, he, if, if he was a good finance minister, he think he was a good prime minister too, then he will be prime minister again. But he didn't do anything good. He did everything under the supervision of John Krejci. Once he come up to lie to him, he ruined everything. So now I don't, I'm thinking they will be ruining the country again the same way because he's leading them. He's the one with the TV, with, with the Justin Trudeau telling him what to do, and we can go in the same shape again. So you are afraid that uh, right. uh, with the Justin Trudeau government, potential government, or any sort of any sort of thing, <laughs> he will he will he will guided by Paul Martin. Paul Martin, and also you know that Paul Martin gave us the same sex marriages. So where we stand for that? So what is your take on this? Uh, I think the same sex marriage thing is uh, again like we keep bringing this to the service again. Uh, I would remind the people who voted for the Conservative because Conservative promised to revisit that. As soon as they take over uh, the country, they said we are not opening the subject again. So, like, let's don't use this because it's a human rights issue. I think I think the uh, uh, gay marriage thing is a, a is a human rights and a constitutional rights for people. Uh, revisiting that, I don't think will help the Conservative that much because that will open the subject like. Where is your promises? You promised us you're going to revisit that. Where is your promises? You promised. First term, you said we were a minority. We don't want to bring it so that we don't open the subject for allegations and discussions and stuff. Now you have been for four years majority. What did you do for that? Nothing. Can I, can I say something? Yes. When you're talking about four year majority, yes. They, whatever the promise Paul Martin didn't do it, Harper did it. Our economy was strong due to Harper, not due to Paul Martin. Because <laughs> since, since the Paul Martin was there, there Harper come three times, then the recession hit there. And there's only one country in the, on the world, they have no recession. Everybody else, people was dying for things. Look what happened in Greece right now. Look what happened to other countries. And, and okay. Harper is a man who will keep our country to the top, and he will do everything the best for his ability to keep the country strong, economy strong, and everything will be done by Harper. If you bring Justin Trudeau and Paul Martin teach him, then you know what's going to happen. Okay. So, so, but there are uh, projections that uh, NDP uh, is also in a good position wow. to make any potential government. When you, when you talk about NDP, we all have a test NDP when NDP formed a government in Ontario. And, and my philosophy is NDP not for the people. NDP, there's two ways. One way to do things, other way to forget it. My, my policy is 
my thinking is NDP just for the Quebec there. Any time McLeod also you heard of the debate, he was also with, with, the, with the Quebec people to have a separate country. And now he's going to run Canada. So since we don't have uh, NDP supporter in our yeah. panel today, so we will not be talking about okay. NDP issue much, but uh, I take your opinion okay. as, uh, uh, as supporter of Conservative Party. And Mr. Okay. I'd like to touch another issue. Uh, can, since can I add yes, something yes, before we move yeah, to yeah, this yeah, point? Yeah, like, yeah. Um, our dear guests keep jumping from one point to the other, like you throw the same-sex marriage issue, and as soon as I open the subject where the not fulfilled promises from the conservative, because I'm from the Coptic community, and the majority of the Coptic community supports conservative, or supported conservative based on, we are going to revisit this same-sex uh, same uh, marriage issue, okay. which was promised, and not for one person, not in one occasion, in multiple occasions, and on public, and in major, major events where there's a huge number of people attended. Where are those promises? Where did they run? They disappeared as soon as I, I, I secured my, my seat. This is the one issue. Now, going back to the, to the uh, financial issue and the recession, who said that Canada is not in a recession now? When your when uh, interest rate goes down to below two or below one, that's indication that you have a recession. You are trying to convince people to get their savings out and invest them. Then you turn around and tell them, I will give you TSFA to put the money back. Like, what is this message? Like, yes, where yes. is the financial message here? Are you yes. telling them to save or to invest? The, yes. bank goes, the bank goes down and reduce interest rates so that people can get their money out, not keeping them there. Keep the money, get the money out and invest. Do something else. Use that money to move the economy. Now you're telling them, but if you put it back, I'll give you a tax break. What the heck is this? Where is the message? Are we should save or use? If it's save, then why the interest is that low? You are not giving me anything for my money staying in the bank. I have to use it to get some money, that interest. And now you're telling me, if you save it, I will give you a tax break. What, where is can, the message? Can I, can I answer? Yes. If you put money into your say, account, yes. you don't get much interest. I, I agree with you. Yes. But don't forget, on the other hand, you don't pay much on your mortgage either. If that interest rate goes up, this country with big trouble and big recession will hit it. Mm -hmm. And also, Justin saying, the first year, he will be down with 20, 30 billion dollar, what number was, I'm not sure, okay? So why we're lowering the interest rate then? What's the message? Why the bank, why the central it? bank, lower the interest rate? Because people buying it, buying the house, selling house, and economy is moving. Yes. And more, more building is building, more, yes. more thing happening to be less money, mm -hmm. and people involving in the business, and getting jobs, and everything. Mm -hmm. It's all cycle works. Ex not exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So the, going back to the TSFA point is actually pointless. Like we are trying to tell the people, make use of your money, buy property, buy a piece of land, invest in bonds, do something, and then we in the turn I'm saying we give you this option. Well, I if, think there's a contradictory to. If you tell them buy bonds, <laughs> bonds also have the same interest. What's where they come from? So we are talking all about I'm sorry, I'm mutual funds. economy. <laughs> sorry, mutual funds. Like, okay, don't so, be big on me. <laughs> so, the gentlemen, we are talking all about economy. No, yes. Okay. In this election, yes. there is another uh, big issue. I, I would say there is an election campaign on economy, on economy as well as on security. Yes. So, uh, Sharif, uh, as you mentioned that mm -hmm. uh, you are from Coptic Christian mm -hmm. uh, community, and as everyone knows here in uh, Greater Toronto area. Mm -hmm. Uh, and um, we are talking about uh, ISIS thing. Mm -hmm. We are talking about Bill C-51. Yes. Uh, apparently, Mr. Trudeau is not opposing Bill C-51. Yes. Uh, but uh, Mr. Tom Mulcair is opposing. Uh, we'll talk on uh, NDP's position next time, since we don't have mm -hmm. their um, representative today with us. But Mr. Trudeau is not very clear about Bill C-51. It seems to us that he's very political. If he goes around certain communities, he, he talks about uh, Bill C-51 in certain communities, he just mm -hmm. gives his reservations. So what is your personal take on Canada's role in Middle East in mm -hmm. context of mm -hmm. ISIS uprising? 
Okay, um, let me talk first uh, uh, on Mr. Trudeau's position. Right. So Mr. Trudeau voted to the to the decision, so he's not opposing the decision. Right. And I was, I mean, I had the honor to be part of the discussion about Bill C-51 from the National uh, Security Committee from the Senate and uh, everywhere else. Uh, and in my opinion, all what Bill C-51 needs is a review, like uh, a committee which can oversee the actions of the uh, security apparatuses, just to make sure that if there's at least there is a, a chance to appeal some of the decisions if we think that it was not fair or it was technicalities was not right or whatever. Just having some committee of some sort to oversee the uh, uh, other uh, uh, security uh, apparatuses uh, uh, application of Bill C-51, I think that would be fair enough. Uh, I might say personally, that's not the party position or anything, I think that Bill C-51 is not a bad thing. We are just afraid that it can be misused, or could be some cases where it's it was not correct, or the information was not correct. As as you know, that some of those security uh, uh, departments uh, they don't reveal the information they base their decisions on because of the security reasons and everything else. So how can we be sure if we don't have any committee to oversee that? But other than that, I mean, the bill itself, the, the spirit of the bill itself of having securing Canada and making sure that we are secured and the Canadians are secured, I don't think any Canadian will oppose that. I know that NDP came out and said, the, uh, Mr. Tom said he might over... Repeal the bill. Repeal the whole uh, bill. I, I would be very interesting to see, uh, interested to see how he's going to do that. Right. That's in regards to ISIS. That's a different story, like uh, hitting ISIS. So, what do you think that uh, uh, Mr. Harper's decision, or the Conservative government's decision, mm -hmm. to engage ourselves into that Middle East crisis is good or okay? Bad. I mean, there's there's two fold in this discussion. Right. Uh, there's some people saying if we got involved, we'll get ourselves into uh, a, a fight which we don't owe anything on it, or we it's not we are not part of it. And I totally disagree with that because whatever happening in any place in the world it nowadays is affecting what's happening in Canada. And we can't sit here and saying we don't have anything to do with that until it reaches our home. That's, I think this is a big, big mistake. But in the same time, we understand that being involved in just uh, using air forces or bombing or whatever, it's not going to solve the issue. Yes, everyone knows that. The only good thing that service serve is we are having some proof or some good standing saying we are against those guys. We are publicly helping. We are involved in, in, uh, in standing with the human rights and all those ISIS practices and terrorism. But we know it's not going to be efficient in finishing the ISIS or anything of that. And I, de I debate anybody saying that by bombing ISIS from upstairs is going to finish ISIS or we'll wake up tomorrow and say, oh, where's ISIS? Oh, they are gone. We bombed them. It's not going to solve the issue. But in the same time, it shows that Canada have a stand against this practice, which is this is the only good thing about it, as I mentioned. Right. So what well, is your take on this very sensitive uh, issue? C-51 bill is going to help Canadians to secure themselves. This is, this, this is only one bad element could come and ruin everything. And Bill, what happened is, is Cox, um, actually the other party, is telling people a lot of things is not true with Bill, Bill C-51. To people don't know what Bill C-51. Bill C-51 will protect Canadians, and that's why Justin Trudeau helped Harper to pass the bill. I think that's a really good thing to have Bill C-51. And, and a lot of the parties saying is we, we make Indian, Pakistani, second number citizen, all this stuff, it's all garbage. We, Bill that's C not the truth, you think? That's right. They will, they will protect Canadian, and we are Canadian now. We are not Indian or Pakistani or Arabic and all that thing. When we come here, yes. we, we show loyal to Canada. Yes. And, and this is the, one of the best things the C-51 bill could bring to our, our communities. Yes. Thank you very much, both gentlemen. Uh, I really appreciate for your input uh, in this very important, timely uh, discussion. 
because we need to aware our viewers about issues regarding election 2015 and I really appreciate for your participation. I just want to say one thing. Next debate we should have on how to educate our people to, to vote and issues and all that stuff. When you go to the people knocking doors, they have a different issues belong to different level of government mm -hmm. and they all blame on one or another. So we should have a next debate or training or, or educate people on that issue, who to ask, what to ask, when to ask. Is there any um, input further from you? Yes, uh, my, my last statement here is I would like everybody to, to know that the, this, despite the fact that all the parties are fighting, we have a country and it's our duties. Everyone like uh, either um, conservative, liberals, NDP supporters to think Canada first. And as, as uh, the gentleman said, like we are now Canadians and our loyalty to Canada, number one, um, <coughs> being in, uh, from different origins, doesn't matter. The only one thing is I'm afraid of is now talking about Bill C-51 and talking about different bills is breaking us from, from each other. Talking about this bill is targeting, um, targeting a community. specific uh, community or certain community. That's not true. And it's going to cause rebels. Like those groups will start bullying out uh, from the getting involved, afraid that they got be targeted or like people have to be shy or whatever that. This is not true, number one. Number two, threatening people that this is targeting this group or that group is, is harmful for our cohesion and our mosaic. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate uh, both of you and uh, viewers as you watched that both gentlemen were talking about one thing very common that no matter where we come from we all are Canadians, Canadians. and that's our message and that's based on that we should participate fully in election 2015. Thank you for watching. Dak TV.